So if we're going to do that with well-being, um, positive emotions, as much as possible, lessen your reliance on that. Um, because it's like pretty much a direct road to a midlife crisis. Um, because it's such a limited model, inflation occurs really quickly, it doesn't matter how much you give your kids, they're going to want more. Like the next step is going to be even more and even more. Like this is a never ending game. It's really never going to end. Actually, we're making it worse by giving them more on an earlier age. Like it used to be that it takes you about 50 years to get everything you ever wanted. And probably now most millennials have reached that point by their 20s. And that's why you can have a quarter life crisis. You can do it quicker. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So work on engagement. The classical advice in education differentiate. What are the odds that you've got like 30 kids in front of you and they're all at exactly the same level of math right now? Like that chance is zero. I went to the Davidson Institute, like one of the really cool schools in uh, Reno, and they've got like an extremely differentiated program. They spend a lot of time figuring out like which kid needs to go to what class. And they said every year, the beginning of the year, we've got 150 students, we've got 400 changes in the schedule. So 400 changes from now, you're going to, level, going to go a level up, you're going to go one down. And these are specialists, mind you. I mean, these have been doing it for years. And they need to tweak that much to get the differentiation level right. So it's really important to differentiate as much as possible. And where possible, tie goals to existing engagement. To get a kid to go from flow from nothing, that's pretty challenging. But if a kid themselves, you know, they're, they're playing either a computer game or they're trying to learn car tricks or something like that. Hey. You like learning card tricks? Well, it'd be interesting to see if you can do it with five cards as well, as opposed to with just three. So now we've already got an area they are interested in. Try raising the bar a little bit to make it a little bit more challenging, whatever they're doing. Relationship. For a lot of kids, this is actually the glue that holds them together. Now we were just having a conversation that for some of these kids, you know, summer camp, like a gifted enrichment summer camp, is what gets them through the other 51 weeks. Just one week a year, because there they find out I'm not crazy, there's others like me, and they, they actually like me the way I am. Um, so now I can bear with like 51 weeks of not have, pay, playing like the chameleon. Um, so ideally they don't have to do that, but this really helps them. So get them into special interest groups. Something they're interested in, ideally with peers or like developmental equals, uh, that makes a huge difference. One day a week, even one day a month. There's actually a lot of programs. If you go on websites like Hoagie Gifted or stuff like that, there's a lot of places where you can find them. Probably your coordinator can guide you to a number of programs, especially in California, there's a lot you can find. So really make sure that they connect with others. Adding meaning to their life. Um, Seligman defined meaning as uh, values in action. So what do you value? What do you think is important? I think equality is important. I think action is important. I think the environment is important. Whatever you think is important, put it into action. If you think the environment is important, what can you do for an hour to make the environment better? If you think equality is important, what are you going to do for an hour that's going to make more, create more equality in the world? And if you're working on the values you have and you're doing something with that, that provides meaning with your life. So it starts with a conversation, what do you value? And then what are we gonna do to do something with that? An achievement, um, like in, in Silicon Valley terms, it's defining your BHAG, your big, hairy, audacious goal. <laughs> it's a goal that kind of makes you tingle, makes you think like, ooh, could I do that? That would be awesome, can I? It would be awesome if I could do that. So really strive for a limit of what can I, what can I not do, and then do stuff that. Um, Maureen Nyhart, one of the uh, researchers in Gifted, um, especially towards the twice exceptional kids who are like broad, are not like uniformly developed, um, have some challenge with that, says what's important to add to that is high challenge, low threshold. Um, your kids are all brilliant at picking a really high challenge, but sometimes they pick one that is so high that they can never reach it, or it's going to take weeks or months or years to reach that. So it's, it's okay to have a goal that's years away, but then make sure you have steps that are small enough to take right now. Cool, you know, you want to change the world, you want to land on the moon, awesome. What are we going to do this week to make some movement towards that? Because then I can do something about it. Because sitting here and thinking, what is going to get me on the moon tomorrow? Nothing. And then I'm going to be depressed. But if I'm going to think like, what can I do right now? I could read a book about spaceships. 
that I could do, cool. Or I can make a mini rocket or I could find out what fuel they're using, whatever. I can do a little thing that's gonna guide me in that direction. So this is a number of things you could do to add to well-being. Thank you.